What's going on everybody? Welcome back to another episode. Today we are saving all the data that we need inside of a tiny, tiny folder over here called data.ss for save state. Doesn't matter where it is though. And it looks a little bit like this. This is what you'll see if you try to edit it, which is, um, you know, not that easy to do. This is the code in X and in here you'll be able to read, hey, there's a high score value and there's also a last save time. Let me show you this right in the game. The way we do this, is by creating an object called save state. This one is serializable and um, you can pretty much input all you want in there as long as it's a serializable type. So if you have new data coming in your game, well, just add it in there and it's going to work. Um, you're gonna have to refresh your save state though. <laughs> but uh, other than that, that's pretty much it. Let's jump right into it. All right, so for this one, you will not need anything. You don't need any type of setup. All you need is your script somewhere in the scene, right here in my case, so save manager, that's all you need. Um, we're gonna have three script today, two for the actual logic and one for testing purpose. The one that we wanna have a look at first will be the save state. So let me quickly open up this one and here it is. It is, a, it is gonna be everything that you need to save or data that persists over multiple use of the application. So um, right here is where you input the information that you'll actually be saving. And how do we go about doing that? Well, we go and we do something like this. So assuming I wanna save a high score, I'm going to declare myself a public int high score. And what else could we do? We could also add a date time for when this has been saved. So last save time and I put them as property. Now do know that this class is something that will be serializing, which means that elements inside of it have to be serializable or you have to overload them to be serializable. So if you're gonna go in here and type in vector three um, and say, hey, I wanna save my player's position just like so, so position, this is not going to work right out of the box. You're going to need to extend vector three so you can serialize it, but right now it isn't and you're gonna have a problem that is gonna be straight up. It's gonna tell you vector three cannot be serialized. So just take two base type that you know are serializable and if you wanna you know, have your own structure, so say you have a room in your game and you have a room item, um, just make sure you make those serializable and deserializable as well. Okay, so having that said, for this one, I'll only be keeping two information, so high score and also last save time. Now this script does not need to be anywhere. It just needs to sit in your project and be in your namespace. What we need to add though to an object is our save manager, which you saw is on top of this object right here. My class, however, right now is empty. So we'll go ahead and we'll fill that one up. So just like we've done with the audio manager, just like we've done with many different manager, we're gonna turn that into a singleton using a static instance. As I'm gonna mention, all the time, as I keep mentioning, it doesn't have to be, if you if you hate singleton, uh, just make sure you reference this object somewhere. Okay, so we have our instance over here for people who wanna copy the code, here it is. Next up, what we're gonna need is a couple of logic field. And here are my logic field. So I'm going to save this as a file, as we've mentioned in the intro. So I'm gonna need a name for that file. I called mine data.ss for save state. It could be .n3k, it could be .uh, your studio name. It doesn't matter. At the end of the day, it's a binary format. Speaking of which, we need the binary formatter. So I'm gonna be adding that at the top over here. So we're gonna be using a binary formatter, but of course you could be using a binary reader, binary writer, you, you could go pretty much anywhere. Just, we gotta turn that data into something that isn't plain text, which is why I'm going through binary formatter. And on top of that, if you want it to be secure, you could also encrypt it, but I'm not gonna go to that extent today. Once we're done with that, we're gonna lay down our start and actually initialize our binary formatter. I'm also going to add a don't destroy on load so this item persists through multiple scenes. And right after that, in our start, here's what I will be doing. So if we toggle load on start, which is through by default, it's also a serializable field so you can change it in the inspector. We're going to call our load function, but we don't have that just yet. So let's go down here and do a private void save and also a private void load. And now this is where our file name comes in handy. So this is what we'll be doing. We will be using a file stream to find our file in the project folder. And then we'll be looking, is that file not null? If it's not null, let's go ahead and deserialize it using our save state format. Um, 
And then of course we have to close it else. It's just going to, to be a problem if you try to save afterward, if you try to reopen that file. Um, if we did not find any file, if it's like the first time that you're opening this, I'm just going to run a debug.log and then I'll actually save, um, which is going to create a new one if we don't have any. Speaking of which, we have to code that mechanic because it's not in there just yet. So it's gonna be very, very similar to the loading process. We're gonna start by saying, hey, okay, so if there is no state right now, if you didn't find anything, let's go ahead and create a new one. Um, and then after that, since I'm using, in this very specific case, I'm using things such as the last save, I'm gonna be setting that right here while we try to save. So state dot last save time is equal to date time dot now. Once again, we need a reference to that file. So I'll be grabbing this line down here and just copying it up here. So we're gonna be looking for a file with the save file name. But in this case, we're not gonna be going with these flags up here because, well, we wanna do more than just read and we wanna do more than just open in case we don't find anything. So here's what we'll do. We'll do create open or create. So that's gonna work here. And then for the file access, we wanna be able to write. So file access, write. You could also do read, write, um, but we're not actually reading from the previous file. We're just overwriting everything. So I think that should actually work. And in fact, I think that just typing in create here also just works. Um, yeah, but at this point, no matter what happened, no matter if there was a file or there was no file, this you know, should be something now, it should exist. There should be a file now. So we're gonna say, hey, let's take our binary for matter and crush in the data from state and put it inside of file, which is our file stream. Once we're done, we close this up. So that's a lot of mumbo jumbo for most of you. So here is what we'll do. We'll go and we'll have a look directly in the game so you can actually um, see the data. So I'm gonna actually create a small script right here that will help you visualize that data. Oh, and I forgot that I'd like the state to actually be public, be something I can access from my other system so I can modify it and also read from it. Um, you know what, we could turn it into a property like so. Let's try this one out. And of course, one last thing I forgot is to make my save and my load public as well. Uh, those are the things I wanna be calling from outside through my save manager, so I don't know why I forgot that, but I have. Let me go quickly down there and change it like so. Okay, so having that done, let's have a look at the test real quick. If I press on the one, it's simply gonna tell me what is my high score right now. If I press on two, I'm going to increment that high score by one, three will be saving and four will be loading. Why did I do all of that? Well, so we can actually test this out and see our data. So let's go ahead and do it really quickly. I'm going to drag and drop my save test on here. And now we're gonna be having a good look at the console because that's really all we can see from here. Um, let's press on start. So it starts with a file not found exception and we know that the piece of code that was actually um, triggered was load because we have the load on start over here. So if we head over here, find out what happened. Well, file not found, so maybe we crashed over here, but we didn't go through that. So we should do a try catch around this instead. And this is how I integrated the try catch and remove the if statement. So basically we're gonna go through that line. If that line crash, then we're gonna go straight to the catch. So let's go back and try this once more. I'm going to hit play. I do have clear on play either, so it should not crash. Um, we have no, fail, no file found creating a new entry. Okay, so that worked, which means we're, we're supposed to have a file, right? We went right inside of the catch um, and it created, it ran the save file down here. Now, if we stop this, play it again, we should actually have the things loaded, which means nothing is going to show up on the console. So let's play and nothing shows up. So this is a good sign. Now to know whether or not it actually worked, we can right click anywhere in our folder, show an explorer and go back one folder, like the root folder of your project. And you're going to find your friend right here, data.ss. And if we open this one up, this is your data. This is actually how our high score and also the last save time is being stored. So it is right here. Now, um, Let's actually have a look real quick at our console and then I'll show you that data in a better format. So pressing on the one is going to show me the high score. High score is zero. If I just bring my code next to us so we can actually follow along. Now, if we press on two, we should be incrementing the high score. So added one to the high score. We're now at one, two, three, four, five. Now I'm going to close this off without saving. Open it up again we should be on zero. 
technically. Yep, we're on zero. We're going to press two a couple of times. So one, two, three, and then save. Save is alt three. So I'm pressing on three right now. It saved my state. If I close this one off, reopen my game, then what is my high score? My high score is three. So it kept track of that quite well. If I go ahead and increment that a little bit more, and then I load instead of saving, and I go and I output my score again, we're back on three. So we basically undid process because we loaded our game without saving, uh, which basically mean it works. <laughs> so we got that done. And the cool thing about this is that if you have a look, let's have the uh, updated version of that. But if we have a look at our file first, it's one KB, so it's not going to destroy your computer or your device. Um, it looks like this. Good luck editing this, whoever wants to. It's not fun to look at, and it's really not fun to edit if you don't really know what you're doing. Um, however, for the people that do know what they're doing, here is what it says. So we have a lot of header at the top here. Um, not much that you can do about that. You can have header all the time if you use a formatter like binary formatter. Um, if you want to have a smaller file, you could use binary reader and also binary writer to create a very, very small file, but you'll have to remember in which order your field comes. And also if you want to save their name, it's a different thing. Um, but you can see your fields are here. So high score, last save time, and then you have the, the data right after that over here, which again is really hard to edit if you don't know what you're doing. In fact, if I was to mess around with this data, I'd probably corrupt the whole thing. So this is how we've done it. This is how we saved our data directly on a file inside of our project. Now it's up to you what you're going to be doing with that file. Do you want to convert it into a string and like save it in player pref? Do you want to push it to a database? Do you want to push it um, in a folder really deep in your project? It is up to you. It's serialized. It's not encrypted, but it's still serialized. So yep, up to you at this point. Thank you so much for watching once more. We had a very simple episode today, but I think it is something that is quite useful and it's much better than using player pref all the time because you know, if you know your way around Unity a little bit, you know how to modify player pref, and that's not always um, not always really fun if you're making game that you know store scores and stuff like that in there. Guys, thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you tomorrow, and um, see you soon. Cheers.